Hi everyone, I'm Chris and welcome back to the lecture on neural networks of this machine learning course. This section is about the activation function of neural networks. The activation function is a crucial component for a neural network. It determines the output of every single neuron. Without a neural network calculates all the linear combinations. They are summed up, but the neural network has no chance to incorporate any nonlinearity. As sketched on the right side, all calculations would just give a linear output. There are several common activation functions to incorporate nonlinearity into a neural network. Some of them might be preferred over others due to their properties. Favorable properties of an activation function result from the training algorithm which fits a neural network to data. These algorithms often use a gradient-based minimization approach. This involves derivatives of the activation function. For example, as we will see later in this lecture, if a derivative of an activation function is zero for a large value range, this can be disadvantageous. The trainable parameters might not be able to vary much in a gradient-based optimization step. A function which might come into our head for an activation function is the step function. This activation function is related to the processes in our brain. Neurons in the brain aggregate the outputs of several other neurons. Only when the aggregated value is above a certain threshold, the signal is passed. The step function is zero in the left half for z less than zero. This corresponds to no signal or no information passes the neuron. The step function is 1, for d is greater than or equal to 0. This corresponds to a signal which is passed by the neuron. But the derivative of the step function diverges at d equal to 0. A function with a limited derivative might be more appropriate. Otherwise, parameter variations might diverge as well. A continuous version of a step function can be, for example, the sigmoid function we've seen before. For large positive values, it converges to 1. For large negative values, it converges to 0. In between, it has a smooth transition. The functional relation is 1 over 1 plus exponential function of minus z, the neuron's linear summation. Note that this function is not point symmetric with respect to y is equal to 0.5. Further, the exponential function is computational expansive to calculate. So, it is worth to consider further activation functions. On the left side, the properties of the sigmoid activation are again summarized. A hyperbolic tangent can be used as activation function as well. This function is limited between minus 1 and plus 1. In contrast to the sigmoid function, the hyperbolic tangent has a point symmetry with respect to zero. Similar to the sigmoid function, the hyperbolic tangent function is computational expansive. This is because it is defined by exponential functions as well. But there is an approximation with two parabolas with a value range between minus 0.96 and plus 0.96. This approximation can be used for faster calculations. A disadvantage of sigmoid as well as hyperbolic tangent function as activation 
is that the derivative far from d equal to zero vanishes because the function is approximately constant. So a gradient based minimization might not be able to vary parameters if the summation value is large. Probably one of the most widely used activation functions nowadays is ReLU. ReLU stands for Rectified Linear Unit. This function is defined by the maximal value of 0 and z. So the function has two parts. On the left half it is constant and on the right half it is linear. Typically this function is used in hidden layers of neural networks. A major advantage over the previous activation functions is that ReLU is easy to calculate. This is because it is composed of two simple functions, a constant and a linear one. However, the constant part corresponds to a derivative which is zero. So, as discussed, this makes it difficult to vary the parameters if the summation has a negative result. Then, the neuron is often called dead because of its inability to change the related parameters. To overcome this issue, the leaky ReLU function can be used. Instead of a constant term in the left half for negative z, this activation function has a finite slope. So the leaky ReLU function is composed of two linear functions. Dead neurons due to vanishing derivatives are avoided and still the function is easy to calculate. Note that ReLU and leaky ReLU are used in hidden layers only and usually not in an output layer. This is mainly because negative values are not equally represented than positive values. The simplest version of an activation function is the linear function. This means no nonlinear activation is applied to the summation of the linear combinations of the neurons. So it's like no activation is applied at all. The linear activation function is usually applied for output neurons of a regression problem. It equally weights the incoming values within the range of the real numbers. So all possible real numbers can be taken by the linear function without any preference for a specific range. Note that if only linear activation functions are used in all layers, no nonlinearity can occur. In contrast to regression problems, for classification a different activation function in the output layer is used. Note that we could use a linear activation for classification as well, but the resulting model is very sensitive to outliers. This was shown in the lecture of logistic regression. So typically an activation function with a limited value range is preferred. For example, the sigmoid function. To decide between more than two classes, one hot encoding of the target variable is used. This means we have multiple binary target variables and each of them indicates the presence of a specific class. A class is present means the y variable is 1 and if it's not present the variable is 0. For example y1 represents if class A is present or not. y2 represents if class B is present or not. And so on. For this multi-class classification problem softmax regression could be used. If we want to use more flexible models a neural network can be used as well. In the output layer 
we use the softmax function as an activation. So the output of the else neuron is the exponential function of the summation of this neuron ZL over the sum over all output neurons of this exponential expression. Each output neuron gives the probability for the corresponding class. Note that all probabilities of the output neurons sum up to 1 as expected. Section finished. If you like this video, please click the like button and consider to subscribe this channel. If you have any comments or questions, please leave a comment down below. And thanks again for listening. See you in the next section.